Welcome back to the GP Productions podcast. Okay, welcome back to the show. Did you like that? I did, indeed. Yeah, my good friend, I always say, Kevin Mullally, best friend of mine, he he made that up. Very talented musician. He put it together. I was going to say, he got some killer rock and roll in the background. Yeah, exactly. So look, <laughs> my guest today, as you can see, is Joey Harris. And you may have seen her in the new Halloween, the final Halloween, Halloween ends. So Joey, pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So look, before all this Halloween stuff anyway, we'll kick into like, how did you decide that you wanted to go into acting? Oh gosh. Oh gosh. That's a very early story. Um, mm -hmm. So when I was a little, little child, uh, I talked a lot, as you'll probably notice throughout this conversation. And my mom would always just say, shut up and sing me something. So first mm -hmm. I was a musician, so I wanted to be a singer. And... Um, I would always pretend like I was on the Disney shows and doing my little thing, but I didn't realize that was like a legitimate job. It just, I don't know why I just didn't process. And um, when I was in kindergarten, I finally realized that that's something I could do. So I went up to my teacher one day and I said, you know what? I don't need to learn how to do math because I'm going to be a singer and an actress. <laughs> Needless to say, she was not pleased, but um that's it started from the very very beginning i've always known and i think that i've been lucky to know or very early on what i wanted to do with my life so i think it's just been a dead focus since then yeah yeah so did you do a lot of musicals and theater then before all this um i was first recognized for my my voice but i <laughs> Uh, I never did any theater, um, only the mandatory one in the fifth grade. <laughs> but yeah. um, aside from that, I I tried to get into theater, but I was so determined uh, to work on my acting and moving forward with that in, in um, movies and film that I couldn't make it to all the practices because I was either in meetings or in classes. And um, it just seemed to me like I was spending time doing something that wasn't the end game, so I stopped. <laughs> yeah. Um, how difficult is it going into acting and trying to like, because it's such a competitive thing, trying to kind of carve out a market and maybe a niche for, like you see a lot of actors and actresses might play one type of character in multiple movies. Do you ever think about that or do you just take every role as different? Um, I think a little bit of both. Um, yeah. I think sometimes it's easy to get in your head and um, try to find similarities with all your characters because once you've played one for so long, uh, you feel comfortable with it. You feel like it's a version of yourself that you can switch on and off. Mm -hmm. So I think it's sometimes hard to pull yourself completely out of that and dive into a different person because you're just creating a whole bunch of lives for yourself. And sometimes you can get lost in them. Um, but granted, I haven't played enough characters yet, um, I think, to really figure out whether I do get as lost as I know some of the really talented people um, in Hollywood do. So I guess it's going to be I guess we'll figure it out. I think so far yeah. I'm doing pretty good with that, but yeah. we'll see. <laughs> the, 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 reason, the reason I'm saying that is a lot of people I talk to in horror, it's kind of like once you're in there and you're like you're in like the biggest movie, biggest horror movie of the year, like hands down, and like a lot of people are going to be watching that. Do you feel like you might get a lot more offers kind of in the horror world because of this? Oh, absolutely. I think... Um... 
oh, that was the niche. That was the niche. I think my mom is a little bit worried about that, you know, because she yeah. gets very scared very easily. So she doesn't want um, to see it being killed on screen, et cetera, et yeah, cetera. Yeah. yeah. And I'm always the one that watches horror movies by myself and I giggle at them, you know, because I know what it looks like behind the scenes. That's not scary. So I think she's a little bit worried for me that I'm going to get dragged down that route and then she's going to be afraid to watch all my movies. Um, but I, I think that I'm more versatile than that. And I think yeah. um, when people watch the movies, they'll see that. Um, granted, I love doing horror movies. It's, it's a blast. But, you know, I, I, there are so many other things that I want to experience and I want to, um, so many other characters I want to play. And I think people will, um, when making those offers, if they do, hopefully I'll be in high demand. Um, I think that they'll offer me more of a spectrum than just horror. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably what you want as well, though. Yeah. So I can have that yeah. opportunity to like grow and be, you know. Yeah. Diversify a little bit as well. Yeah. So look, a lot of people, when they see this interview go up, will obviously want to know about Halloween. So I'm sure you've been asked a million and one questions about it. So we'll try not and uh, make it too boring <laughs> for you. <laughs> Oh, no, but uh, how did how did the initial opportunity arise? Because everyone always has an interesting story about. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I auditioned through my manager. At this point in time, I did not have an agent, um, yeah. and I sent in a self tape, and I think it was for the role of Terry. Um, and initially, they were requesting only male actors because originally my character. Margot was actually a Miles because these are real people. Oh, right. Miles, I was a, I was a man in real life. So they were casting for men. Somehow I still got the audition and I was like sick. So uh, I auditioned. I didn't hear anything for maybe two months. And, you know, at that point you're like, well, shucks, you didn't get it. Um, and this one kind of stung because I really liked the part and I, I really liked the little gritty evilness that I, my character would have. And um, so this one kind of stung and eventually I got a callback for what I thought was um, for my roast, my most recent audition. Uh, so I went into the audition, completely wrong script, uh, completely wrong film. And uh, when they started, I was in the room with the casting directors first before I went into right. the room with David. And so they were like, okay, we'll just like run through it with you. So, you know, brush you up a little bit. And I was like, okay. So we start in the first line and he goes, it's your line. I said, no, it's not. It's yours. And he said, no, it's not. It's yours. And I said, no, it's not. It's yours. And so we wow. looked at the script and we realized we did not have the same thing. He said, you know what? We're just going to wing it. So put me in the room with David and thank the Lord. He was on my side. David just goes, oh, I'm not going to have you do any of that. We're just going to talk. So we just talked about the film, and it was a really, really easy, fun process. That's when I actually figured out what I was auditioning for. Before that, I did not know that this was a Halloween film. So, yeah, um, yeah by the end of the phone call, I knew I had the part. And then I got a call five minutes later that they were negotiating. So it was, um, it was so quick, moving it's like happened. lightning speed. Yeah. And were you a fan of the the franchise before all this and had been had you been keeping up to date with everything? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um again, like I said, you know, right when we started this phone call, I'm a holiday freak. So yeah. I start decorating first of September for Halloween. And I watch this whole list of movies every single year, all the horror movies, all like the fun quirky things that I watched as a kid, you know, like the little vampire. I watch all that stuff every single year. And so that I can really get, <laughs> I get the most out, the of the, out of the two months that I have. Um, and Halloween and Jamie Lee Curtis has always been on those lists. So um, I've grown up watching it and being a fan of the films. And um, so I think it was uh, very healing to my inner child to be able to be a part of that. Yeah. How would you describe that being a child and watching it and now to be now where you are, like part of like one of the most iconic horror movie franchises of all time, if you can put it into words? Larger than life. Um, yeah. I think <laughs> miracle. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> um when you realize that 
you have accomplished something so great, especially when you've been working towards it since a kid, since you were a little child, I think that it, it's, it's like the biggest pat on the back. It's the biggest toot your own horn you're ever going to, you're ever going to get because, you know, that's the first time you can really look back and say, oh my gosh, I did it. All the hard work paid off and I'm finally, and I'm doing it in something that I have looked up to and admired for years. Yeah. And it's supposedly the closing chapter. I never say never when it comes to horror, but it looks like it, it is over, you know, but I will never say never. I know. That's what everyone's like. Are you sure? Are you sure there's not going to be another one? I'm like, I, I, I promise. I think well, that's my understanding. So um, yeah. it's hard for me too, because you always want it to keep going. It's like your favorite. It's like your favorite TV show. You never want. You always want yeah. another season. Like I'm a huge fan of the Chucky franchise and the Child's oh. Play, and oh, yeah. I felt I felt that I kind of lost touch with it when it went to see the Chucky. I don't think it was a very good movie, but now they're doing a TV series on sci-fi, and it's very good. I don't know if you got the chance to see any of it. No, I watched. Um, my movie was Child's Play. That's the one that I watched it a lot. Yeah. Um. Chucky, I just laughed at his hair the entire time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've went kind of into his backstory now on the TV show oh. and sci-fi. Because normally when I see a oh, horror movie going into a TV show, alarm bells will go off for me as well. But it's actually kind of rejuvenated the franchise, much like the, the three new Halloweens did as well. Oh, that's awesome. That's, um, for example, I'm really, really excited to watch uh, the new series on Netflix Wednesday gonna have jenna ortega she's so incredibly talented and i'm gonna love watching her take on the character um especially since i watch those every year on the yeah. adams family so that's gonna be really cool for them to do a series on that yeah coming back to halloween for a yeah. moment and like i thoroughly enjoyed it and but there's a lot of like the critical people online and they didn't enjoy it but i could see it from a perspective where it was treated not the same as, but almost like a Halloween tree. You could see kind of elements even in the credits and little things like that. And the movie was going to kind of veer off in a different direction. Um, what's the response been like on, on your end? And what do you think about people saying, oh, there's not enough Michael Myers in it or whatever. But Michael Myers has been killing people since 1978. Like he doesn't need to be in every scene of the movie. That's just my opinion. I like the movie. I, I, I personally really loved the direction that they went um adding a more in-depth storyline a deeper storyline to follow versus just being solely a slasher um yeah so that for me um was very special to be a part of and i think you know you're always gonna get your fair share of haters you're never gonna make everyone happy yeah. um but I think the response that I have received has been nothing but love, nothing but love. And um, it makes me very proud. It, it makes my day, you know, when people, they message me and they say, hey, I just wanted to let you know, you did a great job. It's my favorite Halloween film so far. You know, just short, sweet messages that, um, they just really make it worthwhile and make it worth all the hard work. And you know that you're doing something that's making others happy. So even if you don't make everyone happy, you're still making, you're making so many smiles. It doesn't, the good outweighs the bad always. That's actually exactly what I was just going to say. And Rowan Campbell as well deserves a special shout out. I thought he was immense in the movie. First movie I've seen him in. Oh, he's so incredibly talented. When I first yeah. met him, um, I hadn't seen the Hardy Boys yet. And so, you know, we're all getting to know each other like, oh, is this, you know, your first film for a lot of uh, the bullies? It was. Yeah. Um, and uh, when we got to him, we found out what he was in, which is the Hardy Boys. And so uh, one day, <laughs> Destiny, Martine and I were, I would make food for us and we'd sit there and we're like, let's watch Rowan's show. So we were sitting in the hotel watching his show going, oh, oh, and then we'd go to set and bro, bro, guess what happened? We were watching this and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I'm going to cry. But he's so incredibly talented and he has such 
um, an on-screen presence, it just captivates you. So I'm I'm so excited for his career because he's he's got big things coming. Yeah, I think so as well. I like the little, the kind of he was like a protege to to Michael Myers throughout the film. Like it was very interesting. I think like it showed Michael Myers in a kind of a fragile state as well because it has yeah. been since 1978. He is getting older. I just think the whole thing just made sense to me, but not to everyone. But that doesn't matter. Yeah, and and you know, um, I think the thing that I really enjoyed about it is he hasn't killed anyone for four years. It's been four years since he attacked the town. So yeah, um, he the more he kills, the stronger he gets. So if he hasn't killed anyone, Weak, he's declining. Yeah. He's getting old. So I think that was a really smart decision that they made to have Corey bring him a kill to make him stronger to take on yeah. Lori, even though. He didn't beat her. He didn't beat her, <laughs> but he tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so for yourself then, what are you, is there any projects you have coming up at the moment that you can talk about? Yeah, I have um, a project coming out uh, sometime next year. They haven't told me exactly one yet, so I'll keep everybody yeah. updated. Um, but it's called Lisa Frankenstein. So it's a film. It's very offbeat. It's quirky. It's a little bit of horror comedy takes place in the 80s it's it's so dorky i love it it's it's one of those films that i think is going to be a comfort film for a lot of people because i think it'll be the perfect escape from reality um and it's got so many incredibly talented people we've got miss diablo who wrote the film who's also um wrote a bunch of you know oh gosh she's so cool and um then we have obviously our director Miselda williams she's making her directorial debut so that was it was very, very special to be a part of that with her. And I was just, I was very honored to, you know, have me be the choice, you know? And um, then we have obviously, again, Healing for the Childhood, Cole Sprouse. We also have Catherine Newton, Liza Soberano, Henry Eikenberry. It's just overall a really incredibly talented cast. And um, everyone is so fun to be around. It was a very, very special experience, a very special film to make. I felt nothing but love on that set as well. Yeah. If you could, uh, if someone made a remake of your favorite film, what would it be and what character would you play? Oh. Princess Mononoke. I wish they would make a, a real uh, live action of Princess Mononoke, but I think it has to be done right because I don't know if you've ever seen that film. It's a studio oh. and never say it correctly film. And I've watched it since I was a little child and it's been my favorite film forever. I make everybody watch it and it, oh, it's just beautiful. So if it's made, it has to be made right. And if I were to choose, I would play Sun, which um, she's the, the wolf girl, she is um, Princess Mononoke. So um, it's so cool. That would be my dream. Yeah, yeah. Have you got to work in TV at all or is it just movies at the moment that you've done? I've not, I've only done film. I've only done film. I haven't done any TV yet, but I really hope to because I think um, when you're spending, you get to spend so much more time with them. And so far yeah. I've been able to create such strong relationships, even with such a short amount of time that I think a series would just bring it all yeah. home. You know? Yeah. People say a lot like working in TV is a lot more, is a lot harder because you have to learn a lot more lines for a lot more days and stuff like that. But that's probably something that you'd embrace anyway. Yeah. I think, um, I think also when you've been doing it long enough, um, you have your own method for memorizing. So for me, I have keywords. So they're trigger yeah. words. So I remember each last word of each line and it triggers me for my for my next line. And so I think you have come up with your own little method that makes that process a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Does that ever lead to kind of improv if you forget something, that kind of method? Actually, we do a lot of improv, especially, um, I did a lot of improv on the set of Halloween. David is very, very just, oh, say this, say this. Yeah. You know, he'll come up with great ideas on the spot and um, you just kind of flow. He likes to give you creative freedom. So 
I really had that opportunity to do a lot of improv on Halloween, even in my ADR work. Um, when we re-recorded re um, a lot of my lines to make me less villain-like, <laughs> um, yeah. it was just a lot of ad-libbing and random phrases and uh, stuff that I was able to record in studio. Yeah. And look, if people want to keep an eye on what you're doing, where's the best place for them to do that? Um, probably my Instagram, which is at Joey Harris official. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything else. Yeah. I'll pop the link of the Instagram underneath this video and look, Joey, it was an absolute pleasure to catch up with you today. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And best of luck with everything. Thank you, man. No props.